What's going on everybody? It's Ben here and we're back with another video on the KLX 110 build. So if you're watching last video and you're back for the next episode, you know that I just got the BBR 143 big bore kit all done, got it running. If you didn't watch that video, go back and watch that. I was originally going to go and ride the bike next and this was going to be the next video, but I used my GoPro chest mount and I really didn't like the way it turned out. I can put some clips in. So if you saw the clips, I'm going to replay one little section and show you what's going on. Listen carefully. So the clutch is slipping horribly between second and third. It's just kind of like, Wah. like it's just, it's slipping. It's not putting the power to the ground. So I went ahead and bought some new parts. I bought a clutch. I bought an hour meter and another thing that's going to make these videos better. Ben Cross. That's me. So first box, I got an hour meter. I want to see how much time I'm actually putting on this bike. And it also helps for like oil changes, stuff like that. So that way you know exactly when you should be changing the oil. Another thing is I want to see how long this BBR top end actually lasts. So that's going to be helpful. Right here, I have a... I don't know if you can read the address or not, or see what it says, Dango Designs. Nice unboxing for you guys. I'm going to sit back a little bit so I'm a little more in the light. We're sponsored. This thing's pretty sweet. It's a dango gripper mount. If you don't know what a dango is, you're sleeping. All the popular like motocross or even like uh, road bike riding, um, crotch rocket riders, people who do moto vlogs, stuff like that. It's a little gripper mount for your GoPro. GoPro goes on the front and it's like a little clamp. And then you just put it right on the front of your helmet. So that way you can talk to and you can hear it. So that's gonna be awesome for better angles. And then the biggest reason, this guy. Some springs. Fresh clutch. This is what we're gonna be throwing in today along with the hour meter. In order to install a new hour meter, it's really complicated. You've got a hole in the back, you got to run your wire through that hole, stick it up in this front piece, push that down until it stops, then you pull this right back through so it's tight, and then you just mount this on to the side of the frame or wherever you want to go with it, and then wrap this around the spark plug wire. I think I'm going to throw this like pretty much what every dirt bike does right up in the, right up here. I got some sticky double-sided 3M shit that came with it. And then we're gonna run this wire down through here. And then get right up on this spark plug wire. Probably gonna put it someplace somewhat out of the way. And then you just wrap it around a ton. And then you can either tape it tape it or zip tie it, whatever floats your goat. So we're gonna take our double-sided tape, double-sided sticky tape, stick pad, majig, stuff it on the back of here, 
push around there real nice. I did already wipe this section of the frame off. I know everything else is wet, but this part's dry where I'm putting it on. And then rip, rip this bad boy off. I don't know how good it's gonna stay on this weld, but it should work. Push it so hard the screen breaks, and then give it a little bit more, and then it's good. Right here's the plug wire. I got that wire wrapped around about a million times. That means that she's good to go. Got it mounted right there. So we got the brand new clutch. We're about ready to throw it in. I got some EVC stiff springs, so that way hopefully this thing does not slip like a son of a bitch like what it did before. And we're gonna get ready to slap this bad boy in. I got the gas off. I don't really wanna drain the oil because I have like two rides on it. So we're gonna set it sideways with the gas off and hopefully the oil will kind of rush down into the engine and we'll get away with taking this cover off without having to mess with anything. So you gotta back this clutch off all the way and tighten that bad boy in. That way I get as much slack as possible. Now we're gonna lay her back down. So we're gonna back this off so that way I can, should probably keep going a little more. So now it's loose, I can kick this forward, slide that out the bottom, clutch is off. Then we're gonna take this, oh, take this kick start lever off. I'm a dunce. This thing's got a, guarantee it, it's got one of them freaking, uh, it's splined and then has a little groove in it, so this bolt holds it in place. Oh, dude, this shock is aftermarket. Check out that freaking adjuster right there. This thing is far from stock. Anodized red. Look at that, son of a bitch. God, this thing's getting better and better every second I work on it. This thing is just decked out with all the best subpar eBay parts a guy can buy. But in all realness, no, it's actually probably a good shock. This uh, this conversion kit's not that cheap. I think it's like 150 bucks. It's got BBR stiff springs in it, like a $400 exhaust. And I paid 500, 500 smackers for this thing. I mean, that's a freaking thumbs up right there, if I'd say so myself. It's a five mil. Got her. Oh no. There she be. Now it looks like, I'm pretty sure all you gotta do is take all these Allens off and we're kosher. she can come off oh oh ah -ha -ha. yeah you've got to be kidding me Should be able to weasel this out now. Yep. Oh, gasket is still intact. Cherry pie. So this comes out. This is gonna come out right here. And then, besides the hip. Oh shit, cha. Yo, Milwaukee should rip this right off. <laughs> Yeah, it's a power of a Milwaukee 3 8 impact if I've ever seen it. There you go. Hold it. Yep, there she goes. Springs in it too. Oh, 
how many springs do you get? You know, you shouldn't have to pull that off. She's not worn at all. What kind of cheap ass freaking shit is this? So we got our old clutch plates all out of here. And then here's the new ones. You're supposed to put oil on them before you put it together. A lot of people actually soak them in oil before they put them together, but this thing's probably not going to get ridden anytime soon. It's tons of snow outside, so it's not a big deal. It'll be sitting in the engine oil for a while to soak it in good. I'm going to slap this bad boy back on. It's in place. And we have the There we go. So that's tight. We have this piece here. And then, let's see, we need to grab new springs. Whoa. I feel like this is going to be a bastard here. Why? Because these are stiffer springs, and now I got to freaking just pry that beast down. No, I'm saying. Yeah, what the heck would I know? Oh my god, that's going to be so hard. That's going to be a beast to get them started up. Shut up. Friggin' me. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking things going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, these suckers are freaking. Tight. Them springs. These things are stiff. TIT tight. Gotta make sure you have these nice and cross threaded and just freaking bore them in with the one inch impact. And then once they. The torque spec on these is about a foot pound below breaking the bolt. Pretty sure that's what it was. Looked it up on the internet once. Got this back on. Now we're gonna snug up this nut. Pretty sure that goes in there. Slide that into there. All right, so that's locked into place. Get that piece of grass out. So this is not going anywhere. So that's gonna ride on there good. I don't have a new gasket and I'm just hoping that this seals up good. I'm just crossing my fingers. There, on the doll pins. So now we had this piece went right in here for the clutch cable. I'm sure it really doesn't matter as long as it's not loose and not broken off in there. Odds are it's going to have to come off again when it leaks, so not a big deal. <laughs> Snap them off.
a little bit of a down and that's a build. So that's in there tight. It's about right, isn't it? Yep. So I like just a little bit of play. Oh, that doesn't even pull that bad for stiff springs. 